If you haven't heard about using ozone for scent control, you had to have just started hunting today. Probably didn't even hear about hunting till yesterday. It doesn't matter where you get your hunting information from, whether it's YouTube, magazines, anything. It's, you'll see countless ads for ozonics this and scent crusher that. You hear about it, you see it everywhere, except I don't personally know anybody that uses ozone anything. Now, since I'm someone that's never used it, doesn't have any experience with it, doesn't know anybody that's ever used ozone anything, um, I thought I could be a little more objective when it comes to researching this stuff. I'm, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I, I'm not trying to justify the expensive products to my wife or anything like that. So, so I think I could come from an outsider's perspective. So the first question I asked was, what is it? How, how, does, how does ozone affect your scent and, and keep the deer from being able to smell you? Now, you may not know it, but ozone has been used extensively for removing odors that you just can't seem to get rid of. After a disaster like flood or fire, when, when you know smoke just seeps into your furniture, your clothes, anything, no matter what you do, you're never going to get rid of that smell. So a restoration company will come in, they'll take all your furniture, your clothing, any, anything that, pretty much anything that can come with them, and they'll put them in an airtight container or room and fill it with ozone. Because of how reactive ozone molecules are, they will react very quickly to any particles they come in contact with. This reaction effectively destroys any bacteria, uh, spores, any anything that could cause odors. And this is why it makes it so effective for treating your, your gear and your clothing. So now that you understand how ozone destroys odor-causing molecules, the next question I had was, is it safe? Now, ozone occurs naturally in our atmosphere. It's what protects us from the harmful UV radiation from the sun. That's why everybody's freaking out when they're like, there's a hole in the ozone, we're all gonna fry. Luckily it's shrinking and that's all, whatever. It does occur on the surface level and, and that surface level ozone is, is safe. However, in high concentrations, it can cause damage. It can irritate your, your lungs, your entire respiratory system. It can cause some heart issues. But as, as long as you don't seal yourself and your scent crush your tote or just stand there and huff your ozonics, you'll be fine. So now that you know how it works and that it's safe, how effective is it for scent elimination? I know there are a lot of products out there that the science is, is pretty sound on how it's supposed to work, but it's, it still doesn't quite work that well in the field. I found an article that was published, it was like three or four years ago by Field & Stream where they put ozone to the test. They took a police dog, which is what everybody uses for testing scent elimination. Um, they took that police dog and in four different boxes, they used various scent elimination techniques. So the first box they used as a control where the hunter didn't, didn't take a shower in scent elimination soap, didn't use any spray, didn't, didn't use any cover scent, just straight off the street into the box. Um, that dog found him in 14 seconds. Now, one thing to note real quick is that those dogs are trained to sniff all the boxes. If, if he had sniffed the first box and knew that the guy was in there, he's still going to sniff the other three um, just because he gets in trouble if he doesn't. So he may have found them in two seconds, but it took him 14 seconds to go all the way down and back again. And that was pretty much what we expected to happen. Uh, not using any scent elimination, no cover scents or anything. I mean, you knew that dog was going to find him really fast. Now, for some of you old school guys that, that don't buy any of the commercial products, the second test was done using the old baking soda and no scent soap method. Yeah, he, uh, he only lasted another five seconds. Total of 19 seconds till that dog found him. So for the third test, the hunter took a shower in scent elimination soap and then treated his clothing in a product that's like scent crusher. I don't remember the name of the of the brand, but it's essentially the same thing, a tote where you put all your stuff in um, and then it gets treated with that ozone. But he did that for 30 minutes and then got in a box. And he managed to escape that dog for 42 seconds. I mean, that is a huge increase over 19. So for the fourth test, the hunter took a shower and sent elimination soap, but instead of treating his clothing and gear in something like a scent crusher tote, he used an ozonics unit. Now this test fared even better. The hunter managed to fool the dog for 50 seconds. So clearly ozone is effective at treating your clothing and uh, your gear 
for your scent and, and also masking it if you use an ozonics unit. But just because you are using an ozonics or something like that doesn't mean you don't have to pay attention to the wind. You should think of ozone as just another tool, a, a supplement to your scent control regime and still play the wind. I mean, you set up your ozonics just in case that deer moves into a downwind area where you didn't expect it. So if you've been eyeing that ozonics unit or that scent crusher tote, I think if you can afford it, I think you should definitely get it. Um, do you need it? No. Um, will it up your game? Probably. So as you know, on this channel, it's not about me. It's about you guys and gals. I want to hear your input. I want to know if, if you've got an ozonics or scent crusher unit. Did it was it a big upgrade to your hunting abilities, or do you think it was a huge waste of money? Um, let me know down in the comments below. So, as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay informed.